Hi folks, welcome to another Building High Performance Teams podcast. Today, I'm delighted to welcome John Dolan, who's the VP of Support for Financial Force. John, good to see you. Hi Dara, how are you? Very good, very good. Great that you're here, John. John, I'm gonna jump straight in and ask you if you can tell me a little bit about yourself professionally and also a little bit about yourself personally, the John Dolan, the, the man behind the, uh, the corporate world. Oh yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, so I've got um, three kids. I've been married for 25 years last week, um, which I'm finding hard to believe myself. That time has gone so quickly. Um, I'm currently working with Financial Force, so VP for of support for those uh, for that software uh, team, they, they do professional services software and they do ERP software. Um, before that, I was with, with VMware for 14 years as global support again. Before that, I was with EMC. I uh, lived in Boston for a while with them as global support again. So I, you're you're beginning to see the lines of a one-trick pony here. Uh, before that, I was um, kind of various managers and team leaders and shift leaders again with, with EMC and kind of maybe with one other electronics company way back in the day. So that's kind of my, um, my kind of work experience uh, backed up by, I did uh, C8 Cork Institute of Technology. I love that organization. I did my uh, diploma and my degree out there with those guys. And I was, as you can probably tell, a logical electronics, uh, electronics and uh, degree. Excellent, excellent. And John, like even, you know, when you're describing it there, you have so many years of experience behind you already. And like, I, I obviously you and I know each other and I know that you were probably were you one of the first people um, as part of setting VMware up all those years ago in Cork. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of first in the, in, in the door and kind of it was interesting because I, I was there to run support. And what it turned out to be was far more than that. It was, okay, where do I sit? Oh, you got to figure that out. Where's my contract? Uh, I always joke about the fact that I think the only part of the contract, my contract that I didn't get to fill in was the actual salary amount, uh, but it was excellent. <laughs> yeah. And then people like, like very quickly, then people like Karen Barry Murphy came along and things like that. And it was a very tight team formed and we, we've built that brilliant campus. It was just, fantastic experience yeah and i had worked out there as well myself uh for eight years and it was it was quite a roller coaster even the years i was there's like a phenomenal success story uh, of which you were there from you know from the very very beginning which is incredible you know john with, with all those kind of years behind you can you tell me a little bit about and you've had so many leadership roles as well can you tell me about what it means to you to be a leader uh, look, the bottom line for me, it's, it's, you know, when you, when you think about this, it's kind of going, I never really kind of set out to be, I'd never had any real goal in life to go, oh, yeah, I want to be the vice president of this that, and, the, and the other. But for me, what was important was uh, I like to work, right? I just love doing what I do. It's just, I like being around people. I like solutions. I like kind of finding, being innovative and being fast and being, you know, executing and making things happen and just making a difference. And, and that to me is you come home fulfilled, you go, yeah, geez, I think I made a difference today. Um, in the early days, could I have worked smarter? Yeah, absolutely. And that to me is kind of, you know, when, when you're, when you're a young leader or where you, when you're embarking on your leadership career, You've got the drive, you've got the energy, you've got the kind of skills, you've got the focus, you, you know, you've got your ability to communicate with people, you're able to influence people, but it's just understanding the environment around you and kind of emotional intelligence, mm. right? So it's work hard, but it's work smart as well. And then that to me is kind of forms, that's what leadership is, is kind of you come home going, you know, I actually think I made a difference today. Whoa, whoa. That's a big box to take. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. That's a, I love that insight around, you know, just loving what you do and working hard at it. And clearly for you, it's it's helped you kind of rise up through the ranks, if I can if I can use that phrase. 
do you do you think do you think leadership it's it's more nature or is it nurture is it something you're kind of born with or, or do you learn it as you go what what's been your experience um well i think there there's any number of types of leader that are out there so i mean yes you know some people you know are just there is actually some people are put into leadership roles that shouldn't be anywhere near them right it's just they get it into their heads that they need to be have a title of manager or have a title of director or something or be and they're they're, they're they just they push themselves to get into these positions and they're just not right for it they're far better individual contributors and can make a much better difference to the world as an individual contributor um but so yes is the answer i think it's it's you you can't kind of manufacture some of these traits, you know, that I see a lot of the leaders, the really good ones I've, I've engaged with have been kind of natural born. It's just in, it's in them. They have that ability to bring people with them. Yeah. And if you ask them, what are, what are the reasons why they have that ability? They probably haven't the first idea. They kind of go, well, I'm honest and I tell the truth and I work hard and I think I work smart and I think they believe me and, you know, they'd struggle to figure out why. So maybe the short answer yeah. is, I think, yeah, a lot of these really good leaders are just it's in, in, in their natural DNA. Wow, wow, that's an interesting insight. Do, do you think, f- from your own perspective, have you found that that kind of leadership has been about planning and strategy, or is it is it more thinking on your feet and intuition? Um, I think, again, this is the evolution of being a leader, right? And it's kind of stopping and understanding the environment you're in early on, early days, right? Just going, hang on a second now, what have they hired me to do here, right? You know, what's the ultimate goal of this? Okay, that's the baseline. Okay, working hard, that's just a given, right? And let me assure everybody who's listening, the VPs out there and the further up along the chain you go, it's a 24 hour job, seven days of the week. I can assure you of that, right? So you have, that's, that's just table stakes. You've got to be willing to put in the effort, put in the hours because um, it takes a lot of time to, to get these things right. And then it's just a matter of, okay, well, what's the, what's on the, what's the company's agenda? What do they really want me to do in this role? What do they need to achieve it themselves as a kind of the strategy and tactics of the company? What is your own boss thinking about going, okay, let me work hard, but let me work smart as well. So yes, there's a lot of planning required. Um, like every single day, I would urge everybody to sit down, go back through their, their notepad, be it on an A4 or be it on um, uh, Evernote or where, whatever, and build their day out, prioritize their, their day out, prioritize their week and make sure they're marching to proper MBO, MBOs at the kind of higher quarterly level. So that it's a structured day, it's a structured week, it's a structured quarter uh, so that people can go, okay, well, what are you doing? And you say, well, this is how we're going to march forward. This is how we're going to move. So um, have I answered the question there or did I meander? A, a no, you, I think you absolutely nailed it. I mean, it's, it sounds and really good practical advice there. I think it's, it, it really is about planning and kind of knowing what your goals and objectives are and having a having something that you're you're actually working towards i think the idea of writing down what those goals are and exactly how you're going to achieve it is uh, is really solid advice so it's it's it sounds for yourself very much that the planning piece is, is crucial to you know being a successful leader which the which emotion makes... intelligence sorry darren no no go ahead john go ahead so it's it's understanding what is going on around you right yeah it, because again, I keep going back to the early days because it's obviously an issue for me, right? Where it was the drive and the ability to, ability to work hard, but kind of really thinking about how am I going to work smarter here? How am I going to really understand what's going on, what I need to achieve, and how I can add that extra value in a controlled and planned way? So that's that to me is what I'd urge every young leader out there is going, yeah, work hard, but. What does he mean by work smart? How do I how do I advance this business and how do I advance my team? Proper structure, proper planning, proper communication, proper like I sometimes I use Gantt charts. I use I love infographics, and everybody loves an infographic. Graphic, and everybody hates to read a two page 
tome of you know where the boss thinks that uh, the, the company needs to go simplified plan on a page one page this is what the vision is this is where we're going to go and this is how we're going to get it done one page infographic i love it i love it that's great advice that's great advice john you've been you've been leading so many different teams and some really large global teams as well particularly with vmware i know you had a massive uh, global team there what do you think are the the key characteristics to uh, it, 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 that you see in a, in a high performance team so uh, i mean look the, as i said there's very different styles of leadership out there um i'm looking at klopp and the liverpool team at the moment and i'm just going you know he doesn't he doesn't conform to what a lot of people would regard as, you know, that kind of calm, you know, a professional leadership. For me, he's just, his heart is on his sleeve at times. He's out there with his, his team, the team, they're hardworking, they're skilled, they're highly skilled. Uh, but critically, and Ronnie Whelan said this years ago as well, and, and I'll never forget it about the Irish soccer team. He said, I don't think any of us were really that particularly good, like messy level. Mm. But he said, we got on. All I remember is laughing. We were always laughing. We always got on with each other. We'd always have each other's backs. We'd always work harder to make ourselves better so we wouldn't leave the team down. And for me, those type of pillars of, geez, I, I really like working with these people, right? Yeah. The, the men and women in this organization, they get me, I get them. And I want to do better for, for myself, for them, and ultimately for the, the company. And that, they're the type of, that's the, the mindset that I, I think, um, at least my style of leadership, I, I, I lean towards that style of leadership. That's incredible. Having having that engagement where everybody just is is on board and wants to make a difference, that drive and desire within them. And, and what, if we can dig into that a little bit more around kind of the, the critical success factors, are there like kind of two, three, four, five things you need to get right, or maybe there's just a top three that you focus on? Um, well, I mean, everybody, you you need skill, right? There needs to be a high skill level there, right? And yeah. people ha with an ability to, uh, with an internal drive to push themselves to get better constantly, right? Yeah. So it was the skill level, the um, the drive, you need to have drive and energy in there and passion and the last piece then would be just an ability to get on with people, an ability to communicate, an ability to be part of a team. I've managed to squash about 15 different things into my top three, but that's... No, that's... That's, that, <laughs> that's good. That's good. And look, at it, everything you're saying there is just, it's just resonating with me and it's, it seems so logical. But, you know, I, I, I'd imagine... I therein lies the great leadership, the challenges and actually applying that in, in real life. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the biggest challenges you've come across when you've been building your teams? Yeah, look, look, the bottom line is, I mean, you've got to celebrate you. And the last thing I, I must mention, and you need to celebrate success. Mm -hmm. You definitely need to celebrate success. Um, and someone a team because as managers and leaders we're always focused on fixing problems right so the the biggest challenge out there would be don't forget to celebrate what the team has, has just done right don't do, go overboard where they're just totally you know that it loses its value but definitely celebrate success and for me you know what when you are starting off a business or when, when you're starting off in your leadership making sure you've got the right people in the right seats on the bus Everybody, yeah, the boss, everybody keeps going on about this, but it's having the right people in the right seats on that bus is absolutely critical yeah. because you, with the best will in the world, it's like the, the, the leader we talked about at the start, who's just, he or she may not be suited to leadership and yet they could be responsible for a major part of your organizations, your business success. You yeah. need to make sure Everybody is in there at the, the highly skilled, doing exactly what they're really, really good at and getting that right for, out of the gate and not trying to get square pegs into round holes. That is a, a that is a, you're on a hiding to nothing yeah. and you will spend all of your time trying to fix those those issues. And is there, um, is there so the, that would. Sorry, go, sorry, go John, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go on, please. Um, so. Um, 
What was the original question? <laughs> I, 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 I made you lose your tra- your train of thought. You were talking. I was asking about <laughs> the um, you know, what the what the biggest challenges you had with regard to building um, oh, yeah. kind of high performance teams. So do do not do not mess around in those scenarios. Be be direct. Be respectful. Be all of those things that you hold yourself accountable to accountable for but just make sure you get the people in the right seats and then it's all around making sure the the challenges would be getting the plan in place and making sure it's communicated properly right some of the vmware teams were you know there's multiple there was a lot of people there there was thousands of people that you were responsible for and i was always sitting sitting there going i'm wondering what the guy in korea is thinking about as i'm rolling this out right or the people in Singapore or even one of the engineers in Cork or in the US or I'm rolling this out I need everybody on board so have I produced a, a, a good plan that people can understand and have I communicated it in a way that they're going okay I get it yeah. right this guy he's trying to make it the business better but he's also trying to make my life a little bit better as well he's thinking about me he's thinking about my life my work ethic my business and he's trying to make it better so that they would be the big challenges just to create a plan and bring everybody with you. Yeah, yeah. I can really hear the planning aspect coming out there again. And indeed, that kind of engagement and communication and understanding, you know, who's on the bus, what players are thinking as, as, as they're following you. Yeah. And look, you've got to make things happen as well. Look, yeah. the biggest challenge is it's all very well standing here going, here's the plan, here's the vision. Yes, everybody understands it, but you've got to, things have got to happen and the team have got to see you making things happen. Yeah. Right? It's no good just laying it, being a great or whatever. Stuff has got to happen. Changes have got to, people, have, you know, that guy's, I want to hitch myself to, to wherever that person's going because they he or she makes that difference okay yeah that's i i get that that totally makes sense you've got to, you've got to be able to you've got to be able to follow up on the plan that you're putting in place and be and be seen to to walking the talk as well john can can i ask you like we're 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 firmly in the era of remote work i think there's there's always been a, a little bit of remote work uh, around and i guess with yourself at global teams you've been dealing with kind of remote workers for for a long time now do you do you think we're at a, a do you think we're at a changing point now are the fundamentals of building high performance teams changing or or do we do we need a are, are they the same sorry or do we need to do we need to try something different in this new world you know i mean and this could be a generational thing as well but i mean i did most of my work at thirty nine thousand feet as i was flying around the place and you know but <laughs> the, the difference was i was going to meet people and it was important to me to show up right because it's human nature right if i haven't there, there was if i haven't been somewhere in a while like you lose that personal touch you lose that contact that human contact where you sit down with the team and once you're in a room if it's in tokyo or if it's in costa rica or in canada or india or where, whatever there's 50 things will come out of that meeting that you will never ever come across until you sit down and you kind of go oh, tell me what's going on you know so finding an ability for zoom or some technology to be able to uncover those nuances of what's really happening in the business yeah. is the challenge, yeah. right? I think I'm getting far more used to Zoom. I think everybody is, but I mean, in this role I'm in at the moment, I really do miss the ability to get into a room, whiteboard everything, you know, get it down, prioritize it, break it down into the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, the threats, and have that energy in the room as the leadership are solving all these problems, right? Yeah. yeah, I'm painting a picture of the, the, the scene from a beautiful mind here, but that's how you know yeah. it, right? That's how we like to do it. Yeah. So how do you achieve that type of energy in a Zoom meeting or in video call meetings? But we're getting there, we're getting better. And the, the, the younger generation coming through, they're used to gaming anyway. So they have formed gaming communities, the high-performing gaming communities know anyway right if you if i watch my kids or my 20 something year olds at this stage they're still 
part of highly evolved virtual teams yeah. that do whatever they do in the gaming world, right? Yeah. And for me, that's that's okay. Well, they've got to figure it out in gaming. How do we bring that across into business? That is that is that's that's an, that's an incredible insight. Um, I heard someone talking about water cooler conversations the other day in relation to you know they were using all this technology, but we haven't we haven't solved the water cooler conversation piece just yet. So on, on that, John, like. And that's really interesting. You mentioned the gaming. I hadn't, I'd never considered that. No one's actually said that to me before. And it's really, really interesting. Do you, how do you see digital technology? Is, is there anything we can do with the technology that's there? Anything more that we can do or anything more that you would like to see to help us in this new world? I mean, it, it seems that the likelihood is we'll never go all the way back to where we were. There's, there's almost an element of, of mm. permanent change maybe not fully outside of the office, but certainly a couple of days a week at home kind of thing. Is there, what, what would you like to see in terms of technology and the application to, to try and close that gap, to try and close that, that remote gap uh, for want of a better expression? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I actually, I mean, this is something that the, the biggest issue I have at the moment with my teams is that I have a whole bunch of human beings that are not moving around at all. They're sitting at desks like myself for many hours. You know, we do, we do, we do long days. We all do long days, but it's, it's, there's no movement, right? And then we get up to maybe do, okay, I might do a 5K run or something like that. And the legs, and your, your, your legs going, hey, I, I haven't been, or I haven't been used for 12 hours here and you want to do a 5K right after. So for me, I think one of the key things people could come up with is some way to keep the human body moving hmm. right or some way to and that's a kind of a left field kind of answer to your question but i think physically and mentally um the human beings are getting locked into 12 hour days where they're not moving and that is going to become a, a, a problem so people coming up with ideas where there's there's an idea of a, an aura ring out there or you already that if, I got from my boss and it just, it tracks your movement. Uh, I actually don't have it on at the moment, but it tracks how long you've been stationary. Yeah. It just gives you a ding going, would you get up and walk around the room and do something? Yeah. So yeah. my suggestion to people would be, you know, have, have a guitar or have a dartboard or have just a little walk around your house or do something. Yeah. And some bit of technology to get you moving. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, just, you know, this is the importance of, and this is just mental well-being of your team. Yeah. Having something besides work locked in um, to get you mentally like, extracted from, uh, from the business because it's just unhealthy. It's great for the business. Everybody's working all the hours God gave, but it's unhealthy yeah. in the long run for, for the individuals. That's I you know um, that's that, I'd be honest with that's something very close to my heart. I, I I it's it's lovely to hear from you in terms of you know that that physical activity uh, and how important it is in terms of, of I guess longevity. Like as you're saying, if you're going to be sitting down for twelve hours, you're not going to you're going to end up a crinkly old crouched up old person yeah. if you're not getting up and stretching out the body it's just not what we were designed to do that's that's an that's an incredible insight can, can i ask you one other question on the digital tools do you have uh, out of out of what you're using today to help you um achieve your goals and objectives are there new tools that you're using more or, or is there something that you're using that you've never used before is there is there anything on that maybe you can share with the audience um. that I mean, not really. I mean, just zoom. I mean, everybody is zooming nonstop, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's um, it's kind of um, yeah. I mean, it's like there's no real new tools that I'm using apart from the zoom. People are trying to, you know, put stuff into Evernote and there's Skype. So, for example, right? So there's a lot of Slack out there. There's a lot of Zoom. Yeah. There's Zoom messages. There's Slack messages. Yeah. There's LinkedIn messages. And as we were engaging, I was going. Okay, I have three or four email accounts. I've got Skype, I've got LinkedIn, I've got, um, okay, you might get a message on the Zoom. So there's probably, without exaggeration, maybe eight different locations that I searched to look for the agenda for this call. Yeah, wow. Right? 
and as I'm as I'm working uh, on a daily basis, I'm looking, I'm getting pinged and going, where did that come from? Yeah. Like you heard a little note and you're kind of going, what note is that for? Right? Because yeah. yeah. you have your alert set up and then you go, you spend five minutes searching around trying to find, now this could be, this could be something to do with age as well, right? Because my kids <laughs> would go, you know, you're 30 years in technology and you're using a pencil and it's like, okay. <laughs> But that's that's for me. Is there any new tool? I think I'm using eight tools all at the same time wow, for yeah. people to contact me and get a hold of me. The one thing I noticed that uh, next gen they're not using is the phone. I'm getting contacted on on everything except for the phone. People wow. do not make a phone call. It's through all the digital. Uh, and it was a funny the other day. I was trying to get a hold of somebody, and I rang them. And the uh, person that I was uh, working with at the time said, look, I had to ring them because I was urgent. So I rang them. And she said, you rang them? Oh, old style, she said, rang them. <laughs> I went, no, oh, I must use the phone. Yeah. Yeah, old style. That's so gosh. for me, it's kind of going, the, the world has moved on to going, yeah. you know, why would you say it when you can type it? Yeah. Wow. Wow. That is that is an incredible insight. It's, it's amazing. What, like, as you're saying it, like eight or nine different tools to communicate with you and and yeah. and the phone doesn't even seem to be included in there which which is incredible which is incredible yeah it's john this is yeah. yeah john this has been a, a a super conversation really great to hear insights from you like this it's uh, i'm sure so many people looking at this will get get a hell of a lot out of it um thank you so much for for joining me today this has been superb super and dara thanks for doing it and uh you should promote your swim in myrtleville every morning as part of that i'm not doing it i'm not going swimming in the snow uh, in myrtleville i can assure you of that but <laughs> i like uh, i like your drive i like the fact that you're pushing yourself on doing things like this uh, so both mentally and physically so kudos brilliant thanks john i appreciate that feedback thank you